So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's take a look at a device several months after its release when it's not shiny and new anymore. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, this is the Google Nexus 10, and this is episode 18 of After the Buzz. Released alongside the LG Made Nexus 4, the Nexus 10 by Samsung was one of the best tablets to hit the market in 2012. It has now been around for over six months. So how is it holding up against the competition when it comes to hardware, software, and performance? Really well, actually. When it was first released, the Nexus 10 had some of the best specifications the tablet market had ever seen, particularly its display. And its build quality and design, while quite simple, are spectacular. The sides and back are covered with a tacky soft-touch plastic that really allows you to get a great grip on the device. And at only 603 grams and 8.9 millimeters thick, it's lightweight and easy to hang on to, even only one-handed. Despite being passed around through a few hands, our Nexus 10 unit has held up exceptionally well over the last six months. And those beefy specifications have yet to really lose their luster. The 1.7 GHz dual core Exynos, while not the most powerful chip on the market, is powerful enough to muscle through graphic intensive gaming and push the 4 million pixels with ease. Speaking of 4 million pixels, the Nexus 10 still has the highest resolution display on a tablet to date. 2560 by 1600 pixels at 10.1 inches for roughly 299 pixels per inch. Its contrast isn't the best, blacks aren't exactly very inky, but the color reproduction, clarity, wide viewing angles, and brightness are top notch. Around back, there is a cover that is removable for the integrated cover offered in Google Play. Unfortunately, the cover on our unit has trouble staying in place, as if the plastic clips are worn out, but it's rarely ever been taken off since we don't even have the cover. Lastly, the speakers are one thing that put this device over the top for multimedia consumption. The large stereo speakers are positioned on each side of the front of the tablet, and they're loud, very loud, and they're virtually impossible to cover up by accident. As far as hardware goes, the Nexus 10 is still one of the best tablets ever made. Software, unfortunately, is still a hit or miss with the Nexus 10, or any large Android tablet for that matter. As beautiful as the display may be, there is still a lot of content, such as apps and games, that do not take advantage of the extra real estate or extra pixels. Some developers have yet to update their icons, and many of the applications and games simply are not compatible with the Nexus 10's resolution. Facebook, for example, still does not have a tablet-optimized Android application. Agenda Calendar is restricted to Portrait, and a lot of other applications are still phone-only. On a brighter note, this device is a Nexus, which means it's currently running the latest Android firmware, 4.2.2, and takes advantage of all the new features, such as multi-user support, lock screen widgets, project butter, wireless display support, and much more. And when you find content that is optimized for the high-res display, it's fantastic. Movies, for example, look phenomenal. Books, magazines, and optimized apps and games look great as well. It's truly unfortunate that Android is still suffering from growing pains in the tablet realm, but it's worth noting that Google was adamant about developers adding tablet support for apps at Google I.O., and more and more high-quality apps and content are added each day. The high note for the Nexus 10 is performance. Unlike many tablets before, the Nexus 10 suffers from very few stutters and very little lag. Although it doesn't score as high as some newer phones or tablets and benchmarks, those tests don't always translate to real-world performance, or prove a lack thereof. The 1.7 GHz dual-core Exynos chip has no trouble in day-to-day -day performance, and it handles most games and productivity apps exceptionally well. That said, not every game plays perfectly. The frame rate dropped significantly in Asphalt 7. With a 9000 mAh battery keeping everything going, the battery life is great, so long as you don't crank the brightness all the way up. You can almost watch the battery drain away when it's at full brightness, but at roughly 50% or less, it lasts through most of the day, if not all day. After 6 months, the Nexus 10 by Samsung is still one of the highest caliber tablets on the market. Its display boasts a full 1 million pixels more than the 3rd and 4th generation iPad displays, it operates with few stutters, and holds up moderately well in the battery life department. For multimedia, productivity, and everything in between, the Nexus 10 is still one of the best, if not the best, Android tablet on the market. And considering it starts at just $399 for the 16GB model, it's still not a bad deal. 
that's going to wrap up this episode of After the Buzz. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this one, click the like button and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin, and I'll see you next time.